In part three of the Excelsius Beginner's Guide, I'm going to introduce two new components and show a little more interaction with the data. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a combination chart to my canvas. And I'm going to dra drag it over. I should also note that I'm starting with the file from the last Beginner's Guide part two. However, I've deleted the horizontal and vertical sliders and I've added some more information inside of the sheet uh, which you can pause and type in once we get to a point where we're talking about it. Uh, so here's my combination chart and I'm also going to add a combo box and we'll add it right here. So, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the data that I've entered in that's new. So basically what I've done is I've entered in, again, everybody's name and five months across the top with the number of friends that each person had in the corresponding month. And then with I have the totals for each month. And then this row here I'll get to in a minute. Uh, this is actually going to be populated by the combo box. So go ahead and type these values in or you can just use your own values but make sure you do it for the names and the months so now I'll go ahead and I'll configure my combination chart and I'll set the title to number of friends which is an A1 I'll get rid of the subtitle and I'll go ahead and create a series I do that by hitting this little plus button and now the series name comes up here and what I want to do is I want to create a series for the total of friends so I'm gonna select series name as total and then the values are going to be these values right here the corresponding totals for each month and the categories are gonna be the month names so I'll select those for the categories or for the labels um, and there you go, you can kind of see how it's it's previewed there with the total of friends per month. I'm going to add another series by hitting the plus button. And that series will actually be this row here. So I'm going to give it the name of the name that's selected. Now what this row is going to be is it's going to be populated by the selected person. And what we're going to show is we're going to show their number of friends as it relates to the total number of friends. So just bear with me on this one here that we're just going to use this data and I'll show you how it's populated once we get this completed. So then the values will be the values for that person's name. And the, the labels are the same regardless of what series you're using so don't worry about changing those. So notice now that John's number of friends, how they correspond to the total. So he's about 200 here of the total 500 of all the friends. So now that we've done that, we can configure this combo box. So what I will do is I will select the labels for this combo box as the possible names. And then what I'll also do is go under behavior and I'll say the selected item is label number one so that we always have something selected by default. And I'll go back to general and for the series here what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the series name because it really doesn't matter and change the insertion type to row and the source data is going to be this array of data being the person's name and their all of their month values but do it for everybody John, Steve, Adam, and Eric and hit OK and then the destination will be this single row so what we've done is we've set the insertion type to row and we set the source data and the destination so the selected row for our insertion type will go into the destination and that's how these values here will change as we change the combo box value. So let's go ahead and just preview that and test it out. Uh, 
Okay, so now John is selected. Let's see how we select Steve, Adam. The values change depending on who we have selected. So let's go ahead and unpreview this. So we used the horizontal sliders in the previous example, so let's go ahead and do that again. I'm going to go down and grab just one horizontal slider. We don't need to do everybody's name. It's just another example of how to interact. And I'm going to make this a little bit wider. And I'm going to, I'm going to make this Adam's horizontal slider. So I'm going to select his name for the title. I'm going to map the data. I'm just going to map it to his, his May value. And then what I'll also do is under Appearance, Text, I will set the position of the title to the left so now it moves over here. Notice when I had it as top center, it's up here. I'm going to make it left so it appears over here. It's a little bit nicer. And if I go back to the general, I can set the maximum value to what I had before to the max. And I'll go ahead and hit preview again. So now when I adjust Adam's number of friends, it's going not only is it going to adjust his data set here, it's also going to adjust the total number, especially it's going to do it for May. These are only going to be May numbers because I only have May selected. So let me go ahead and select Adam. And then I will adjust there, see how you notice how that's changing. Now I didn't map this to the pie chart. Um, if I wanted to do that, I probably would just map the pie chart to the May value since that's what it really is mapped to uh, now. So I'll, you know, the labels can actually change to here. And the values again are in columns. And I'll just map to those. And now if I preview it, you should see both charts change as I change Adam. Select Adam. Yes, yeah, so you notice they're both changing. So Adam doesn't have to be selected though to affect either chart because remember the total is going to be affected as I change Adam's amount. So the, the total there for May is changing. And that's it for Excelsius Beginner's Guide Part 3.